Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for April the 20th. Certificate of deposit. You know, you can get a certificate of deposit at a bank. It, it's always been a very secure way to save money. You can get a six-month CD, get a 12-month CD or 18-month CD. So you have a definite amount of time that, you know, that you know that your money is going to come back to you and, you know, you you know what the yield is, you know what the risk is. So the point I'm making here is that this has really absolutely nothing to do with the stock market. I think a lot of people sometimes confuse uh, certificate of deposits or bonds, current yield uh, with, with stocks. And, and a lot of times people want to buy high dividend paying stocks, but they need to realize that a dividend is a derivative of earnings. And if the earnings of the corporation start to falter, they'll cut the dividend. So, you know, just be aware. Now, bear markets always signal a leadership change within the overall equity market. The leadership going into a bear market is rarely, if ever, the leadership coming out. Because of this rule of thumb, we view bear markets as periods of extreme opportunity. So just using common sense, <clears throat> and you start to understand the concept of speculation, you have to be flexible so that when you go into a bear market that you maintain a watch list and constantly be looking for the new leadership because the leadership will change. You know, I thought this was interesting here. This is all the possible reasons not to invest. I mean, Hurricane Katrina. I don't know if anybody remembers Y2K, but that was, I thought, kind of an interesting point. You know, back with Y2K, everyone had an opinion about Y2K. In fact, there was even a, uh, a New York Times uh, weekly piece about things to do to get ready for Y2K. So the, the, the moral here is, is that there's going to always be something out there. There's always going to be a negative. Best thing to do is just not have an opinion and let the market tell you what to do. So just kind of looking at where we are with the market, here we go. This is the new highs. Uh, still not getting over 60 a day. So the buyers really haven't come into this market like we would like. Now, I changed this indicator a little bit. I'm putting the new lows down here. So you can see that the new lows have pretty much dried up. We're seeing a big improvement there, which pretty much tells me that maybe the sellers are done, but the buyers aren't coming in yet. So that's what we've got to see. Now, on our indicator called the uh, power index, you can see here that we are at a negative 12%. So we have clearly broken below the zero line, which is telling us that maybe interest rates are going to start to stabilize. The Federal Reserve, their work may be done. Uh, this indicator is designed to do that. Now, it gave us a warning back in 2020 that the Fed was going to start raising rates, which really has been the problem with this market. Good news, though, is, is that we're seeing a steady improvement here, and it looks like the beginning of an uptrend here. Now, if we can break 4,200 on the S&P, actually, if we can take out the August high, which would be about 4,300, that would be a really positive sign. So you can also see here, also with the NASDAQ, we're above the 200-day, and also notice that the 200-day is starting to turn up. So the market's looking, looking better. In fact, I wanted to point out the volatility index. Now, this is a a 50-day moving average, and you can see that it's in a downtrend, and the VIX, the volatility index, is in a downtrend. In fact, it has hit a new low, so volatility coming down is a good thing. Now, on the aggression index, I'm having a little bit of trouble here. You know, we are on a buy signal with the aggression index because it broke out above the lower moving average, but it somewhat has stalled out in here. So, you know, we're in earnings season. You know, this is a measurement of technology stocks versus consumer staples. It's just a simple ratio, and it's simply saying, you know, maybe we're starting to see, an, you know, we call this the aggression index. In other words, if you're in this kind of uptrend, you want to be aggressive. However, when you're in this downtrend here, you don't want to be aggressive. You want to be very careful. Now, in our three economic indicators, you can see here where interest rates really came down, broke below that 200-day moving average somewhat in a downtrend. Now, if rates get back up here or something like that, that's going to be troubling. But so far, so good. 
Now on oil, we're we're continuing in a downtrend in oil. Uh, we we you know started to see improvement after OPEC cut production, but you can see the price is basically turning back down again. The real good news here is the financial stocks are starting to firm up. You know all this uh, talk about bank failures and so forth back in March really hurt the market, caused a pretty a dramatic drop. But we're seeing some improvement there. Another snapshot here would be the regional banks. Uh, you can see here the regional banks in March, you know, about a 30% drop, stabilizing, not really breaking out to the upside, but we're not breaking to the downside. We'll just have to see, but the banks look like they're starting to stabilize. Here's Charles Schwab. Uh, you know, we, we, we custody at Charles Schwab, so we, you know, we're watching it very closely. You can see here the big drop during the bank crisis went somewhat into a downtrend, but looks like it's starting to stabilize and break out back above 55, which is a very important period. Now, remember this. I want to remind everybody that, you know, as you look at the market, you have to realize that demographics play a very big uh, role in this market. So we want to know what these millennials are going to spend their money on because the millennials and the Generation Z generation at age 35, they start spending money, buying houses, having babies, you know, uh, uh, consuming. So back here, we were in a consumption cycle from the baby boomers, and you can see the, the bull market that resulted. Then when the baby boomers turned 54, everything just kind of went stale. Now we're starting to get back into an uptrend. Now right here is where the oldest millennial turned 35. So this would say that if we are in a consumption cycle, you really want to focus on stocks and companies that are, uh, the products and services will be, be used by this demographic. So here's one. This is Academy Sports. Uh, what we understand about the millennials and their, and their consumption is they're interested in experiences, they're interested in travel. So you can see here with Academy Sports, the stock has really been in a nice uptrend, actually hit a new high here recently. Uh, then if we look at a weekly graph on it, it even kind of becomes a little bit clearer. This is a weekly chart, and it's just in a steady uptrend, you know, uh, really looks good, you know, as far as, as, as far as things go with technical analysis. Now, you know, we, we, this is the first store for Academy Sports. They started out in San Antonio in 1938. You know, I can remember growing up in Baton Rouge, we had a store called Steinberg's. Everybody went to Steinberg's. It was a very popular sporting goods store. Well, we don't have Steinberg's anymore, but now we have Academy Sports, which is really a value retailer. Their prices are very reasonable. So if you have any questions, please let me know.